Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create dependent dropdowns in Flask WT Forms or Flask WTF and Flask SQL Alchemy. So what I mean by dependent dropdown is simply that one dropdown controls the options in another dropdown. So in the example that I'm going to create, I'm going to have a state dropdown. So you'll be able to choose a state, let's say California. And then from there, you'll have cities in California in the next dropdown. So that's exactly what I'll be doing in this video. So to begin, I have a little bit of code ready. I have the imports that I'll need for this. I have my database configuration, the secret key configuration. And I also have my database model. So if I just go into the table that I have, so test.db and then look at the tables. I see there's one table, the city table. And if I select star from city, I see four cities, uh, Las Vegas and Reno, which are both in the state of Nevada. And then I have Los Angeles and San Diego in the state of California. In a real example, you'd probably have a table for the states as well, but this is just a bare bones example to get you started. I don't want to build out a, a fully featured one, but this should give you an idea of how to approach this and you should be able to apply it to any dependent dropdown that you want. So this is going to involve using a little bit of JavaScript and fetch and we'll see how it works in just a moment. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a form. So I will create a form and I'll just call this form. So this form is going to have both the state select and the city select, so the drop downs. So I need to inherit from Flask form and then I'll create two fields, so state and city. So city is going to be a select field and the choices I already know. So like I said, this would probably be better in the database, but since uh, this is a simple example, this first drop down won't be from the database, but the second one will. So choices needs to be a list of tuples. So in this case, I want California as one of the options. And then I want Nevada as the other. So NV for Nevada and CA for California. And with the tuples, the first value is the uh, value of the option. And then the second is the actual text that you see. And then the city is also going to be a select field. But with the city, I won't use any choices here. And the reason why I won't use choices is because it's going to depend on whatever is a state. So I'm going to initialize it to be the states or the cities from California. But just know that the reason why I'm leaving it blank is because the whole point of it is it depends on whatever state is selected. So I'll go ahead and create a route. And this just will be on the index. And I already know it's going to have the methods get and post because I'm going to be posting the form here. And then what I'll do is I'll instantiate the form. So form equals form. And then what I want to do is I want to fill in the choices for the city. So like I said, I want to initialize this to be the cities in California because that's my first choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use form.city.choices. So as you can see, I'm basically just modifying directly the choices here. And I need to have a list of tuples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a list comprehension. And the first part I'll write is the query to get the data. So it's going to be city.query.filterby. And then I want to filter by the state equals CA. So as you saw from my database, uh, I closed it already. But as you saw from my database, I have the two letter code for the state column. So it can either be CA or NV in this case. I'm using CA. And I want to get all the results. So this is the query that I'll be using. And then what I want to do is I want to say uh, for city in this. So this is going to return all the cities that I have. In this particular case, I have four cities in the database. And it's going to loop over those four cities. And this is going to be the variable I use. And since this is a list comprehension, the final output is going to go all the way to the left. And remember, I said it needs to be a list of tuples. So for each city, I'm going to create a tuple. And the tuple is pretty simple. So I'm going to have a city.id because I want to use the ID for the city from the model. And then I'm going to have the display text be the name of the city. So city.name. 
So this is just going to create a list of tuples with the city ID as the first part of the tuple and the city name as the second part of the tuple. And you'll see that it kind of follows along the same style as this. Instead of letters though, for the first part, it's going to be numbers since I'm using the IDs from the database. Okay, so now that I have that, what I want to do is I want to render this template. So render template, and then I have an index.html template, and I'll pass my form to that template. And if I go to my index.html, you see I don't have much so far. So what I'll do is I will uh, create the form, method equals posts. I don't need to put an action because it's going to be on the same endpoint. And then I'll just use the form variables that I have. So the cross site request forgery token is one. And then the state is another. And then the city is the last one. I'll put just a really simple submit button here. And then that should in my form. So everything looks good here. So now what I'll do is I'll start up the app and I'll go to the page. Okay, so we see, let me zoom in a bit. We see the drop down for California. So the select, I have California and Nevada, and then I have Los Angeles and San Diego here. And this Los Angeles and San Diego are generated by that query. So if I go here and I change uh, the state to NV, then I should see Las Vegas in Reno. And that's exactly what I see. So I'll change it back to California because that's what I wanted to start off as. And then what I'll do is let's allow for the form to be submitted. So request.method equals post. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to return uh, some text for the state in the city. So return, I'll use a H1 tag. So the state is going to be blank. And then the city. So city is going to be blank. And then I'll format this with uh, form state data, since it's the only representation of a state that I have. And for the second part here, I'll create a new variable called city that's going to have the city name. And I'm going to get that city name from the ID that is passed through the city dropdown. So city equals city.query.filter by ID equals form city data, and then give me the first result. So let's see if that works as expected. So California, Los Angeles, let's say I change this to San Diego and I hit submit query. I see state CA city San Diego. Okay, so that's almost, well, that's everything we need for the form itself. But of course, when I change states, I don't have an updated list of cities. So like Nevada and then Los Angeles, as far as I know, there is no Los Angeles in Nevada. So the important part of this is how do I get the code for switching this up. So there are two things that I need to do. I need to write some JavaScript to request for the additional cities and then update that list with the new cities. And I also need to create a route in Flask to give me those cities. So I'll start with the route first. So I'll create a new route. I'll call this city and I'll allow it to take a variable. So the variable in this case is going to be a state. So anytime you are passing a variable through the URL, you have to use a parameter in the route function. And what I want to do is I want to basically query the database for all the cities that I have for the particular state that's passed in. And then I want to pass those cities back to whatever is calling this. So I'm going to first query for the cities. So I'll say cities equals city dot query filter by and then state is going to be equal to state. And then I want all the results. So if I pass in Nevada here, it's going to give me all the cities in Nevada. So Reno and Las Vegas. If I pass in California, CA, it's going to give me Los Angeles and San Diego again. So now for each city, I'm going to do a little bit of processing and then I'm going to append it to a master list. So I'll call this master list city array. 
and it's going to be initialized as blank. And then what I'm going to do is loop over the cities that I got from the query. So for city in cities, what I want to do is create a new city object for each city. So I'll create a, something called like city object like that. It's going to be a dictionary. And then I'm going to add the ID and the name to that object. So ID for the city is city.id. And then the name for the city is going to be city.name. And once again, this is just from my city model. And then I'm going to append this city object to my master city array. So city array. And I'm calling it an array because I'll be using it in JavaScript and same for object. So it's actually a list, but um, I'm thinking JavaScript right now. But you know, they're equivalent. A list and an array are equivalent. So I'll pass in city object just like that to append. So for each city, it's just going to append onto this city array. And then finally, I'll return a JSONified version of this. Uh, I need to pass a dictionary, and I want the dictionary to be cities. And then I'll pass in that city array, just like that. So now I'll go to this endpoint directly. So slash city slash NV. And I see I have two cities here. The ID for Las Vegas is one. The ID for Reno is two. If I change Nevada NV to CA for California, I see I have Los Angeles and San Diego here. So ID three for Los Angeles and ID four for San Diego. So that's all I have to do on the Flask side of things. And the reason why I created that is because I need to basically call that route every time the select for the state changes. And to know that it changed, I have to use some JavaScript to basically um, put a listener on that dropdown. So I'll create script tags here. I'm just going to put everything in one file. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get the actual objects for the state select and the city select. So uh, I'll create two variables. So state select is going to be equal to document. Um, let's see, get element by ID and then state. And then I'll do the same for the city select. And I just need to get these two because I need a way to modify them. So like I said, I want to trigger the change on the, so I'll go back. I want to trigger the change of these options whenever I change this option. So whenever I change the state dropdown, I want the cities to update. So to do that, I'm going to put an on change listener on the state select. So state select dot on change. And I'll create a function to handle this. And then inside the function, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to get the value of the state. So state equals state select dot value. And what I'll do is I'll alert the state so we can see that it appears correct. So I'll refresh the page. And then now that I have the on change event, every time I change it, I get the alert. I see NV is here. If I change it back to California, I get CA. So I know the on change is working and I know I can actually get the value of the select box. So once I have the value of it, so I know which state they just selected, I want to fetch the cities for that state. So to do that, I'll use fetch and I just pass in the endpoint. So in this particular case, it's city and then there's a variable part to it. So state. So this is the same city that I just created here. So city slash state is a variable and here's just the JavaScript equivalent. So then this is just uh, getting the response for calling that particular endpoint. And inside of here, what I can do is I can convert the response. So this is a response object. So it's not the data that I want yet, but I can transform that data into a JSON object. So response.json and then then again. And then this anonymous function is going to take in the data um, and that's going to represent the JSON version of the response. So what I'll do is I will alert the data so you can see it.
okay so object object so it'd be better if i use the console so let's see console dot table and then if i do that again i see down here it's a little hard to see but uh inside of cities i have las vegas is one and reno s2 so i switch it to nevada if i change it back to california then down here i see los angeles and san diego there so now that i know that i have the data what i want to do is i want to loop through all of the the cities in the data so what i'll do is i'll say uh, for let's see let's city of data dot cities so i have an array of cities and this cities comes from the cities here from flask i'm going to loop over it and i want to construct some new html for the drop down list so what i'll do is before the loop here, I'll create a variable called option HTML, and it's going to start off as being nothing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to append to this option HTML for every loop. And basically the option HTML just has the option. So if I look at the source for any drop down, we see that it's basically option value, what it, you want the user to see, and then same thing for all of them. And they go in between the select tags. So the option HTML is going to be, so I'm going to append basically what I just said. So I'm going to create an option and then a value. And then I'm going to add in the city.id as the value and close this out. And then I also need to add in the description for the city. So the name of the city, so city.name and then close out the option here. So even though I'm putting variables inside, you can see that I have the option tags here. I'm just using the variables because it's a pretty easy way to inject the data inside of here. So I see option value. I have the quotes for the value and it has the city ID. And then the city name is going to be in between the option tags. And the very last thing I need to do is I need to update the city select to use this new option HTML instead of the old. So to do that, I'm going to use city select dot inner HTML. And it's just going to be set equal to option HTML. So this is going to overwrite the old inner HTML, which is the options uh, for the original city, original cities. And it's going to update it with uh, whatever the data is that was returned from the fetch call. So if I do this again, if I change Nevada, I see it changes to Las Vegas and Reno. If I change to California again, Los Angeles, San Diego, back to Nevada, Las Vegas, and Reno. So as you can see, it's pretty easy in principle. Um, there are some things you can add to this, of course. You know, you can check for error cases. But I just wanted to keep this simple, just to keep the video short. But this is basically the process. So finally, let's just see if it submits the data. So if I go to Nevada and then Reno, hit submit query, I see Nevada, city Reno. If I use Nevada and then Las Vegas submit, I see Las Vegas. If I go to Nevada and then come back to California and then go to San Diego, hit submit, I see everything is working correctly. So that's all I want to cover in this video. I'll post a link to this code in the description below if you want to take a look at it for yourself and modify it. Um, if you have any questions about anything I did in this video, feel free to ask and I will try to answer the best I can. Um, just reminding you that I have my website prettyprinted.com where I have various free and premium courses that you can check out and learn different things in a more structured way instead of just watching random YouTube videos, you can watch structured videos in a course. So. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.